<coughs> Chairman Rogers yields back. I now recognize uh, Ranking Member Pallone for his questions for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Some of my colleagues are quick to argue that EPA's proposed fine particulate matter standard will hurt the economy, but history tells us that's a false choice. Since its enactment in 1970, the Clean Air Act provides a perfect example of how we can make steady progress in cleaning up the air while enjoying economic growth. So, Ms. Cooper, do we have to choose between clean air and economic growth? No, I don't believe we do. And in fact, uh, when you think about it, there's a lot of documentation in the scientific reports about how many people are required to go to emergency rooms and get medical care because of the impacts of poor air quality. And any time that our workforce is not healthy, they are not at work. And if they have to be in an emergency room with their loved one or themselves to get care. Uh, so I don't believe that we have to choose. I believe that whatever choice we do make, however, that it has to take into consideration the many, many people who are impacted. And in fact, without stronger standards, uh, the, some of the scientific reports suggest that there will be even a higher death rate. We're already talking about 100,000 deaths per year related to PM 2.5. Well, obviously, I agree with you, and that's the success story of the Clean Air Act. Um, when we're talking about air pollution regulation, my Republican colleagues often focus on costs, specifically the cost to polluters of cleaning up their act, but they ignore the costs associated with exposures to unsafe, unsafe air faced by communities across the country. And I believe this concentration on polluters' costs is misguided. Over the history of the Clean Air Act, industry has consistently exaggerated the potential costs of controlling pollution while downplaying the legitimate costs that air pollution puts on communities. So let me ask you again, Ms. Cooper, could you shed some light on the cost of air pollution to communities? Again, the cost to the health of our communities, to our most vulnerable people within our communities, to children. Children, unfortunately, because of their developing bodies, are at greater risk than adults are. They're not little adults. They're developing uh, their lungs and Therefore, they're more susceptible. Uh, pregnant women, uh, there are documented evidence related to the birth outcomes related to pregnant women. And there's recent studies that even link breast cancer to uh, particle pollution. So all of those costs, those human health costs, are very dramatic. I don't know many people who would trade their loved one uh, for dollars. Well, thank you again. And I mean, these costs are real and have significant impacts on our families and our children across the nation. It comes as no surprise to me that a majority of Americans on a bipartisan basis support clean air. According to recent polling by the American Lung Association, 74% of Americans generally support EPA updating standards with stricter limits on air pollution. So I wanted to ask unanimous consent to enter the polling from the American Lung Association into record, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Um, and you have a copy? To get you the record. I give you a copy. Uh, well, without objection, so order. Thank you. Um, and um, let me ask uh, Ms. Cooper again, in your work, have you found that the idea of cleaner air is popular with communities? The idea of cleaner air is very popular. And in fact, when the EPA held its hearings, there were over 62 members of Moms Clean Air Force volunteers across the country who testified. So it's very popular. And as you mentioned, um, through uh, research and documentation by the American Lung Association and others, uh, it's been shown that voters believe that clean air is important. In my uh, immediately past home state of Georgia, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution uh, did a study that showed that 70% of the voters in Georgia supported clean air irrespective of party. Well, I, look, I think we can all agree that no one should have unhealthy air, and that's why I support EPA's efforts to set stronger science-based fine particulate matter, NACs. Um, I mean, we know this pollution is dangerous for public health, and EPA must ensure that, NACs are, uh, that the NACs are health protective. It's clear that the science indicates that the current standard is inadequate, and I think we owe it to the American people to ensure there's a strong standard in place. So 
Thank you again. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields back.